Hey guys, and the miscellaneous girl or two. I had some time to think over last night what I wanted to do with the front brake, and um, I kind of like the idea of trying to back the leather with a piece of metal of some sort. So uh, brass was the first thing that came to mind, and I went. I was at Home Depot picking up some uh, some uh, copper uh, clamps to replace the, the steel ones that are on there, the galloping ones. And I tried finding something that was on kind of a roll, but uh, you know, pretty much everything is now going to plastic and it's getting harder and harder to find stuff. And I didn't have much luck there. So then I started thinking on the way home, what about like an old um, um, curtain rod? You know, the old brass looking kind of curtain rods. I have a feeling they might be aluminum and they're coated or some of them were actually brass too. And uh, I went around my house, of course I couldn't find any without maybe taking a curtain down, but uh, you want to go that far. So, uh, then, and then I would uh, flatten that. So then I was thinking of like a round tube to, uh, you know, what can I slice off of a round tube? And then it went from that to some other thoughts. But then I also started thinking I got that horde of, um, these are uh, like a uh, old wooden bandsaw that he had, and these are old bandsaw blades. In worst cases, I'm gonna go with maybe one of those. We'll clean it up and make it like a shiny metal. They got different thicknesses, but uh, this is a thin one. But uh, what about backing? You know, hold on a second. There you go. What about backing? You know, gluing that onto it and making that the backer. A little fatter, but that that's the idea. You know, here's again, there's different thicknesses. So. And then from there, I went to well, what about copper? And I got a little roll of copper there, and then. I had a roll of brass somewhere, and I cannot find that, you know, Murphy's Law. But uh, I, can vi I can visualize it, I just can't find it. I got a roll of copper, I, I can use that. This is just the sheathing, there's more than enough on the roll. But uh, I have a feeling that's gonna be a little too thin for uh, doing what I need to do. Uh, possibly I could fold it over, but I, I have a feeling trying to fold over uh, three and a half feet of that stuff on itself uh, might be a little hard to get to maintain a straight line you know so I decided to try going with copper and I uh, figured what about taking about uh, a half inch tubing I just ran it through the bandsaw and you can see it's, it's split up to my mark and uh, I, I'm gonna say that's uh, probably a half inch wide so I figure I'll go give that a shot the only problem is it's got a curve to it you know and uh, what are we going to do about that curve? So I don't know. I don't know if I want to try pounding it out or, or sticking it in a vise and squeezing it flat. But I have a feeling it's going to leave marks all the way down it. And I uh, you know, kind of want to get like a flat piece. But uh, again, I got plenty of it. So we could try it. If we screw it up, we'll just go and, and try some more. You know? So uh, I think that is the venture I'm going to go do. And uh, see if we can just get a flat piece of metal to start with. And then we'll go from there. Alright, so I walked around the hoard. I was trying to figure out what to go flatten that out with, and I kind of remember that I picked something up at a yard sale, and I wasn't quite sure what it was. But um, when I had looked it up when I got home, I think I paid 15, 20 bucks for it. Who knows? It had a tag on it. I think it's down here, but it's all gummed up now. Um, but I think it was for making jewelry, and basically, it's uh, you know you got two round dies that can uh, you can turn up and down uh, distance from the top handle. The, you kind of crank them through and it draws them both through. Well, that flattened that piece of copper out just perfect. So now I, now that I know I have this, I could use it for other things. Mini rolling mill is what it says on it. So uh, that worked out good. Glad when something uh, comes out of the hoard and now becomes useful. Anyway, so I uh, took that and um, gave it the shape of the wheel and setup that's going to be on there because I, I didn't want to put it together flat glue it and then um, try to bend it later because you know the inside is going to want to try to maintain a different shape while the outside wants to become larger and it won't pop off so I went for um, you know again roughly the shape made the bend for around the top and uh, we're going to go let that kind of cure up for uh, probably quite a while and I'm going to go jump on to something else um, and then the glue that I got for it I ended up going with um, this liquid nails, perfect glue. Again, it's got an eight hour cure time and a 
set time of an hour. But when I was looking through all the different things, um, it does, it says bonds, you know, fabric and leather upholstery. And then it goes down to glass around and metal is on there. So I figure, um, you know, metal to the uh, leather are both on there, so that should work for us. Uh, I also thought of like maybe even two-sided tape, but uh, we'll see how this kind of works out for us. Two-sided tape would have been instant. I could have kept working with it, but uh, so be it. I was going to wrap it around the rim and then put a strap around it and kind of tighten down on it, but once I started taping it up, I think that uh, it was good enough. There's no air gaps on it, so uh, there's a strap. So, uh, we're going to go let that be, and uh, I figure I'm going to go jump on to something else. And start making something else. So I'm not quite sure what that is, but I think I may go with um, uh, maybe taking the bike out, flipping it around, and uh, working on that back wheel. The uh, bike had that kickstand on it that was all kind of one unit. So I figure maybe I'll go drag that in. We'll see how that will mock up towards that back wheel, and how that will go into fitting in there. And uh, yeah, it's probably going to do so. I'm on to, on to that. And so I brought the victim back in and uh, stripped off the, uh, the center stand off the back of it. And the only issue is that has 24 inch wheels and I'm working with 26. So it's going to be a bit of a, a, a fitment adjustment. Uh, in the down position, it clears the wheel. But when you go and you click it to the up position, you can figure this is a straight line it's as long as it can be now it is pivoting from there and not there so when you flip it back it now hits the tire believe me it does so uh we have to more than likely i'm going to change where this point is i may move it to like right here and then these guys uh help support it so it just uses like the old brake arm lever brackets you know, they would go on and it gets one on each side and that's what kind of holds that whole system from racking so. and the other thing is it's got a couple of supports in there and I am smacking off the wheel off the um, the hub there so I'm gonna cut this free I'm not quite sure where yet I'm gonna cut this free and move this out of our way and then we can kind of come back and maybe build that again later I'm not sure but as for now it has to be moved I still kind of want to leave it in there. Probably if we can come to maybe right here. Still keep the triangle, which it keeps it from racking. And the other side will still be on there too, so. So I'll go pop that back out of there. We'll cut that and uh, see what I need to go about getting that guy to fit on there. I threw in a single blaster, as you can tell, real quick. Get some of the pink off there. Plus, if I need to do some cutting and welding, it's uh, got to get done anyway, so. So when I dug out some... Uh, machine washers, which basically it's a thicker, harder washer than a, a regular stamped out one and welded those to a location that would give me, you know, that's the original location I kicked them out here, to give me enough room for it to swing back and clear the tire. And it does. A uh, couple things that I'm, I'm off on and I'm seeing already. This should be down here more so that I can get the clamp around it and grab it. But it's already so far back that that may be a mute point. I may just end up cutting this right off and extending something and grabbing it like I should. And uh, one other unforeseen uh, item that I ran into, actually I should uh, show its function first. So what it has, there's actually a lock on it. This, this lever right here is a lock. So it can lock it in that position and then it, it swings back up. No problem, all seems good. Uh, put it down on the ground, seems fine. Except for one thing. One thing is, it is offset to that side. You can see the center of the uh, the rivet there is in the middle of the tire, and then there's the other one. Well, those guys should be more parallel to the center of the bike. So what happens is, when I set the bike down, it's real stable going that direction, and it wants a tip going that direction. So. I'm trying to come up with a solution to go and fix, fix that. <laughs> and I already got this one cut free, so it, it, it's clear in that section of the wheel. And I thought, well, you know, I'll just cut that one. I can kind of go and bend it over. But you really can't bend it over because what's going to happen is this leg is going to get longer. As you, sweep, as you straighten this one out, that's going to get longer. 
and this one's going to have more of a bend on it. It's going to get shorter, so that bottom section is going to end up leaning. The more you, you, you bring it over, the more it's going to lean that direction, which in turn is actually going to cause the bike to even go further that direction. So now I'm trying to come up with a solution, and uh, part of me is almost, almost wanting to kind of bail on this and just make my own, but uh, I think I'm going to struggle through it or work through it a little bit more. One thing I'm thinking of is I can cut it right here. And the reason why it's doing this, by the way, is that the center of the frame is now not in the middle. If you look where this leg is, and then you look where this leg is, you know, the, the wheel now tucks out around it. Capiche? So it's trying to hold that sucker out a lot further than, uh, on, uh, a lot further than one side of the center of the, uh, the wheel is literally not in the center, you know, you're looking at studs on each side. And it's just trying to follow that. So I thought of um, just the nut that's holding the wheel, and then I added another one behind it on the washer. I didn't want to try using the same one. But one thing I thought of is I can put this one on the inside of that one and leave that one on the outside. Again, that creates another problem, is that I have to make adjusters for back here to tension the wheel to hold it back so that when the belt's under power, it doesn't want to pull the wheel forward. And here's the ones that came off the other bike that came in to give you an idea of what I'm talking about. So it would be something like that. That caps, you know, that you pull on the, the wheel with. Well, that's where I am. So I'm sitting here staring at it and uh, trying to come up with solutions and uh, whatnot. What do you think? It's also, this one's kind of bent too. Not that I can't bend it back out. So, hmm, I say. What well, the other thing is, maybe I can just cut everything right off. Le leave that where it wants to be. Right? I can keep this part of it and keep the lock. That should be fine. Maybe even put it back to its original location and then just build this part where I want it. That might be a better way to go, I think. Now that I'm starting to think about that. Kind of like that. And that'll put everything back right where it should be. This will line up to where it needs to be out here. The center will be over the center of the wheel. Yeah, I'm kind of liking that. Well, we'll see what I come up with. As you can tell by the hum of the welder, and uh, it's in front of you, that uh, came up with something anyway. Um, I jumped a little too hasty <laughs> because I, I cut these free and I'm like, well, let me go build off of those. And then I ended up tacking them back together. So, walk of shame slightly. I ended up coming down and uh, catching two wrenches with two nuts on them for like the little foot pads. And then come back on the other side and let everything kind of go straight to where it needs to be. And, um, I like that part of it. The, and then when you, but, but here's the problem. You ready? Actually, is it it's up off the ground? Let's get it up off the, yeah, we're not. Okay. All right, so it's got a lock on the side of it. You flip that and it allows it to come out of the key. Looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good, looking good. And then it comes up to where it stops and it's an eighth of an inch away from the tire. But I really don't think that's that big of a deal because what I figured I could do, uh, I, count, I was kind of hoping to kind of follow that line anyway. So if I make it so it only comes up that high, um, we now get, get gain enough room where it won't be an issue. So um, what needs to be done is just take some weld and just kind of build up the slot a little bit. So just a, a shy hair shorter. I know what you're thinking. You say, well, why don't you just move that down? It doesn't work because this is my pivot point. The more I try to bring the slot down, the more that this wants to go towards the rear of the bike. So it kind of, it, it's following the same path. You know, this isn't my pivot point. That's my pivot point. So it, it's not in the center of the tire, you know what I mean? So if I went to go swing this thing all the way around, you'd probably get up to about here come back down and come back out of the circle, you know? 
and I want to keep it so that I can use these guys to hold it. So that's about right where it needs to be. Actually, it could probably even be a little bit lower. But uh, I want to keep it so that when it's all the way down, it's at least straight up and down. Any, any more past that, I'm going to need it to um, uh, lock all the time, you know, so. You won't be able to get it up on the stand without having to go grab the lock. At least this way you can kind of flip it up into place and then use the lock. My other thought was, okay, you got this section to latch it into. That's what it does, and then it can't, no, it can't fall out of it. Now, why can't I just do the same thing in the top position, and then I don't have to worry if I go ahead and hit a bump or something because of the extra weight. I added to it that it won't pop down on its own. And you are attaching it to like a keeper on the rear fender, but um, you know, this will be a safe, this will make it so it won't come out. I'm not that crazy about the look of this thing. It's kind of um, ugly, but uh, we may just kind of clean that up or you know, tr at least trim it up so it's a little bit more attractive. Yeah, these guys gotta go over there and kind of catch that. And, and you also catch the, um, the brake arm for the wheel. And one last thing is that, although that's close, the tire is as far back as it can go. So it's never gonna travel any further back from that. If anything, it might be a little bit forward too, so. All right, well, what am I gonna do now? I think I may go do some more kind of finishing up welds on that so it's a little bit more stable. Actually, what I should do is let the bike down and see how stable the bike is. That would probably be a good idea now, wouldn't it? All right, it's got a load on it now. It's got weight on it, no load on it. <laughs> and everything's free, the front wheel's free, all the straps are off, the blocks aren't touching, and it's pretty good before it starts to even, even there, it's still gonna wanna fall back to the center. Lean it pretty good. So. So we are the other way. Before it, it went, wanted to go to that side. I also kicked it a half inch. Yeah, this side's even. This side's even better. I kicked it a half inch. The wrench set up that way, so it actually does stick out a little bit more to the left than it does to the right. But by the naked eye, you're really not going to see it. That probably actually even looks the other way because of the the spacing here, the gap, and then the big gap on the other side. Now the other thing I have. An issue with now is it's got a bit of a wiggle because all this stuff is flexible. So now I have to go and probably tie these back together again because if you you kind of you can see the bike flexing on it. Plus it's flexing on the weld. So I'm gonna go do something about that and see if we can kind of uh, stiffen that up a little bit and regain some structure. All right, let me go uh, attack that. And of course I had to get some uh, utensils in there, so I ended up actually using two butter knives because they worked. So I was able to just kind of slide it right up inside the, the previous groove and uh, go make ourselves a couple of little triangles. And uh, it kind of boxes it in so it can't rack like it used to. And worst case, I already had it down there, but I think it's fine. I was going to do another one on the outside here, kind of bridge from here to here. But uh, it really doesn't need it. it. It's not that much of a of a um, issue. Although, um, if I'm going to have it up on a center stand and I'm going to pedal it to start it, it may be shaking around a lot so that, hmm, we'll address it later. <laughs> but uh, I kind of like the way it is. I have enough clearance in the back of the tire. What I did was, again, I just, like I was saying, I just built up a little bit of weld in there for now just to, uh, to act as stop so it doesn't travel as far. And when I take it off, I can fill it to that level if that's where I want it. And then the down position is right there. I possibly like it a little bit more forward yet. I don't know. So I think next will be to, um, let's try how it looks in the back. I guess that a bug eyes. <laughs> it's got a smiley face in the back. I might as well have eyes. Uh, smiley face for handlebars. I might as well have eyes for a uh, 
rack. So uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, maybe trying to lay a fender over the top of it and see how like that stuff can kind of tie together. So there's a blue one around. How many times I'm gonna say so? Somewhere. I should probably get that. There it is. That's the that's a green one. That one's pretty heavy. It's a motorcycle fender. I think it's kind of short for what I want though. Yeah, I want to come like for the back, that's okay. And then I still want to kind of tuck it. I'd like to come down into here, you know. So I think I may go look in the hoard. I possibly have an idea, but then again, you walk back there and then another idea pops in your head. So let me go see what I can go find. Must suck to be a girl's bike. Anyway, look what we got here. Uh, Sears, I think it was? Nope. Torpedo. The torpedo girl's bike that was erected in the front. See that front fork's kick back. But... I love those fenders, they're nice and fat. Okay. They look pretty decent. The back end's banged up a little bit, but that's fine. Which kind of good that way. We'll just kind of knock it out and, and see what we like. So I'm gonna go rip those off of there. At least the back one for now, we'll start with that. And uh, we'll see how that kind of fits uh, around my setup up there and uh, what we can do to uh, See if we use that. Plus, I think it's actually uh, it's decent metal. I wouldn't say it's heavy duty, but it's decent. It's not like a Walmart one now. You can stick your fingers through it, you know. So, all right, let's uh, flip that sucker over there and uh, get her naked. Poor baby. So here we got it. I didn't even bother knocking the dents out of there. I just want to stick it on there and see how it fit the circumference of it and. Uh, you figure it's off the same size wheel and most bikes are pretty much laid out so it actually you know everything lines up to kind of where it would want to go from the factory side it's pulling through the other side because the uh, arms are holding it it's holding it there but if i can get a decent air gap around the tire i think i like that and the, the that's where it would line up to the um kickstand so it'll be like almost right there if I want to put a keeper on it I can it has to get notched around the belt of course but that's fine so I could attach it there I'm gonna to have to sand the shoulder down some and then I could probably put a dent in it to suck it up a little bit further I'd like to get about another Another half, I like to get it like like that much exposure around it. Yeah, like that. Kind of like that. So uh, let me uh, go beat on that thing for a little bit and uh, see if it wants to cooperate and uh, play. All right, I think the last thing I did was talk about beating out the back fender. I'm not sure. I've been staring at it for an hour after I figured I'd grab the camera and... Uh, Point shoot and talk. The um, back and front fenders I got from the donor bike, just kind of sitting on there and moving them around and checking placement and chains and all the other guards that have to go on it. So we kind of run around the horde grabbing stuff. Uh, I don't know where to start. Front fender. I think if I slice the fender right in half and then sleeve one side into the other to make it smaller but it'll make it stronger stronger you know what I mean so my thought is probably take out a little bit of it probably take out where that is slice that out slice this out have one cap over the other one and I'll kind of adjust adjust the two pieces and see what I like for a window of how, how big and then I probably can take the uh, shrinker stretcher and We'll hit it on the stretcher right here 
and relax the, uh, the, the bend of it. Try to make it a little fatter too. I'll take apart that, uh, that fan, that, uh, I don't even call it, yeah, fireplace uh, guard. And uh, so using the pieces of that. And looks at the frame of it. It's got two pieces of frame. Here's one. Here's the other. I was kind of thinking see how much of a crashing I could do here. Maybe something like... What are you going to stay? I knew, I knew it was getting over. Out of hand. I was asking for too much. Can we do that? <sighs> Never mind. Anyway, one going like that and then one going over the chain area. And then I have these I can fill in if I want. Yeah, these are the same size of it so that I can go right over it on the uh, probably from the inside. So you can kind of still see through it. And it might be too much brass, might not be. It doesn't hurt to have it on there. Um, worst case, I just paint it out and, and you don't see it anymore. Or I'm thinking like this kind of stuff. If I paint the frame, whatever color I'm going to go paint, I don't know yet. And then I paint this too, then I come back over and I sand over and I just kind of highlight the, uh, you know, something like that. And on the other side, there is, uh, I took two of those pieces to see what it would look like covering the belt on this side. Can't get back that far. It kind of gives you an idea, and then I can. I'm thinking of maybe maybe copper, and uh, I'll make you know this piece probably about an inch wide or so, and um, make the the frame out of that with copper. Probably rivet it to to this. And what else? Overheating. Um, I talked about putting a fan on it. Don't know. Still may. I have. I, I'm leaving the capacity of that to do that. But this was the original pulley that was on the um, generator that it came with, and I cut it off to use the the cut to make the pulley that's in there. But anyway, so that's what's on the inside of it. And uh, what I was thinking was trying this first, which is going to be increasing the uh, surface area for to uh, lose. Uh, to dissipate heat. So what if I was to take this Cut those back pretty much to almost where they're flat, you know, what I mean cut them cut them back to to this area And then take the pulley And I'm gonna cut like a notch like a an arrow in it and an arrow in it going the other way We'll cut it cut it So it's two halves and then be able to slide one half in at a time. I want to catch in on these fins and I'll, I'll keep tweaking it until I get it just right. So one side will go on and then the other side will go back on. So it'll kind of sandwich together and uh, be wedged in the fins. And then I'm going to take the two fins. Now it's keyed still up on top, kind of holding it together. And uh, I'm probably going to um, copper wire tie the whole thing and then do the same thing on the other side and I'll just sit there like a big heat sink picture it down another another inch inch and a half something like that I know it looks weird but uh, eh, you never know uh, and it's removable just cut the wire it comes right off if I find I don't need it or if I need a fan or whatever the, the issue is um, you know, you can work with that. And I think when you're riding, it's going to circulate a bunch of air kind of going through it, you know, and, uh, at very worst case scenarios, I could also put a fan blade right over the top of it, blowing down or sucking up one of the, one of the two, you know, kind of creating a bit of a draft through it. So those are just thoughts I'm pondering as, uh, it's kind of getting to that stage, you know. See what the next thing needs before I commit the thing in front of it to do something. <laughs> kind of sneak up on everything, you know. 
like to stand. Fenders, eh, you know, sometimes it takes a little while for the stuff to grow on you when you're looking at it. So, you gotta kind of stare at it for a while. Also, what kind of screws you up is the, all the lines on the, especially on the back, the back fender. You got a tire that's split, two different colors. You got another color on the um, fender, and then you got lines in that. So you're looking at it, just so much stuff kind of stacked together in that one spot that if you erase all that, put a solid tire on it, and then uh, color tire, and then you know the fender's all one color. And you gotta try to picture what that looks like. The same with everything else. I'm kind of trying to think of colors. I don't know. I. I I find as you build the bike, the bike kind of starts to dictate what the next part is that goes on. You know, you I don't know how to explain it. I, I sat on it and um, checked all the controls. I love the um, the brake is is perfect. Real comfortable to kind of to grab as you need it. And uh, I think I might do some like leather. Whatever I do here, I'll probably do on on here. And we got the new belt drying. It's been cooking for a couple hours now. It is an eight hour cure though, so. We'll let it go for the night. We'll play with it tomorrow. But uh, that's already pre-bent to kind of go wrap around that sucker. And then the whole thing's got the bend to go around. The bottom of the wheel, I should be able to you know straighten it out in some places and kind of Manipulate it some, but I just can't. You can't go too far; it's gonna crack. You know, it's gonna pop off. So I want that be. It's probably fine until I just screwed with it right then, right? So a lot to think about. Color changes on these. I got. I may want to minimize this stuff. I think it looks a little too bulky, but. Don't know yet. Same with that guy. It might be too bulky or it might be fine, you know. It might the the fact that you you can kind of show what they are. You know, the whole bike is you look at it a little bit and then you start to recognize some stuff, possibly. So it's not like I have to not not make them look like what they are, you know. Yeah, front fenders. I think coming over the front way too much. <laughs> it makes it look uh, stubby. It, it shortened the whole, the whole bike up. Hmm. All right, guys. Well, this is going to get long, so I'm going to shut her down now. Again, everybody, thanks for watching, comment, subscribing, and I hope I have this thing running this spring.